Hi everyone, welcome along. Today I'm going to show you how to fit a mid-position three-way valve. Okay, now I know a lot of you would probably just renew the, the motor bit at the, at the top, which is uh, quite often done and quite often does do the job, but it is really best practice if you could renew the body and the motor as well, because they're both worn a, about the same amount each and it's really good practice to renew the whole thing. It's a little bit more of a job. Uh, we have got to drain the system to fit it. Uh, I'll take you through it so don't worry. But once it's done you know you've got the whole thing renewed. There's a little bit of wiring to do. We've got five wires on here but it's very easy to do this. I'll show you again when we do it um, because you've only got to list the, the cables which terminals are going into. Uh, you can write them down if you want to and we can get those right. So they look a bit daunting because there's five but don't worry about it. It's not as bad as it looks okay it's, it's not too bad a job so the only thing you will to do obviously when we have emptied the system you will have to buy a little bit more inhibitor to put back in your system to place what you've drained out all right so without further delay i'll take you down and show you where mine is and the little job we've got on hand here today well as you can see there's mine inside this lovely little cupboard here which is an absolute joy to work in isn't it <laughs> But luckily for most of you, you'll find your freeway valve is normally uh, in the airing cupboard. Uh, it's a bit more accessible than this most of the time. So it wouldn't be quite such a bad job as the one I've got here to renew today. So first things first, obviously make sure the power is off. Now I have a switch on my boiler up there to turn the boiler off uh, so it'll be dead. But if you're unsure about the electric side of it, make sure you pull the trip out. Uh, take the fuse out or whatever, make sure that that is off there must be no power okay danger 230 volts take note <laughs> okay um, once you've done that I usually undo that while we're draining the system out so you've got to then find your drain valve now wherever it is next to your border or whether it will maybe by a radiator put your hose on turn your water off obviously uh, you may have to go in the loft and tie the ball cock up on a little F&E tank Depends how you want to do it, or you can just switch the mains off while it's done. So, without further delay now, I'm going to get this drained out and we'll move on to actually uh, removing the valve and taking the wires off. So, okay, while we're draining down, I usually disconnect the cables. If you kind of make your, your cable clear, like I've done here, this is the black cable going up, okay, to our box. And just, just clear the cable. You can see there's the green, the blue, and the orange, uh, and the white, and the grey. Um, and if you're not sure about this, you know, don't tackle it. Get yourself an electrician in to do it. Okay, it's only a case of if you feel confident, make sure the power's off um, before you touch anything. If you do decide to do it, but all you've got to do really is just make a note of where they're going. There's numbers along the top there. Just make a note of where they're going, because once you've undone them, if you write them down even, uh, you can just replace them back in the same holes. So it's not too difficult, but please, if you're not sure about this, uh, do not touch it, okay? <laughs> Safety first, leave it to an electrician. You can still fit the valve uh, and get an electrician round to connect the cables into the control box there. Okay, but without further delay, I'm gonna take those out now and uh, then we'll uh, get on with the valve itself. Right, the wires are all out now, pretty simple. I've made a note of all the numbers where they go back in so we know what we're doing. System's now empty for me, so I'm quite ready now to undo it. I like a little short spanner like this to undo and get it on the nut nice and square and just push hard and it will go. I've actually slackened this one off just a bit because they are really tight at the beginning, but just give them a good pull like that and they'll go. You can see that starting to come undone there. And again, the bottom one, same. Give it a good pull and there she goes. And we're on our way now, we've just got to undo these now. Uh, and then we'll pull the pipes out and get the valve clear. So, as you can see, I've now undone the relevant connections. And it is all free now. Just pull your pipes out where you can. And you may even have to unjoin, do joints further back to make it loose, just to get it out. And the whole thing now should just pull off the end of there. That top off. There we have it, bit of dead water in there, don't worry about it. We're gonna get a little bit. There we are, that's the old motor out. But not too bad a job really now, we just gotta replace it back. And uh, we'll show you that one now. Right then, are we ready to put it on? Um, when you get your valve, you'll get three nuts with it that come on the on the threads like so. But if you're renewing it the same type, like this is a Honeywell, 
um, you'll find they should fit straight back on the existing nuts that are on the pipe so you haven't got to worry about that you know the threads are going to be the same as I say with these valves whatever the make is a valve that has gone on your system make sure that you buy the same type it must be exactly the same fit and it will be as easy as the job can possibly be it's bad enough just fitting one that is the same without having to change all the union nuts as well and if you had a different type possibly the wiring as well wouldn't be right so it's very important same valve as you've got in all right, now I've loosened all the pipes off up under here. See, so it's good. Yeah, I've kind of loosened them and slackened them off so I can get them to drop down on the pipe. So it's kind of a, a little jiggling act really to get them in, and just just pop them in like so. Get get some of the nuts started that, that need starting. Get them on, and then it will hang it in there. Push it in like so. See that pushing? I like to use boss white. I know a lot of people don't, but that's my preference. I prefer it and just one of those things that's me just get the nuts on there like so get them started let's see that bottom one there i was struggling a little bit there with that one so if i've done this one again it's going to be easier to pop our bottom one in so it, it really is a matter of, of of what what is easiest for your particular valve to get in but uh, in this instance the bottom one is better for me to get that one in and pull that one in afterwards it is a juggling act don't get me wrong, it is a real juggle and act and get it in. So we get this one in now. Okay, I've managed to juggle the last one in. I needed two hands, sorry about that. I need to get right in the cupboard and uh, I can get the camera in there as well. So I'll, I'll just pull it and push it in. It's a bit of a jiggly act, getting the pipes in. Don't worry about that, it's always awkward. But once we have got it in now, we can just do them up. Make sure we get these nuts up nice and square and do it up nice and tightly now. That's the next thing. Right, over then, there we are. Once you're quite happy that your nuts are tight and uh, everything looks pretty tickety-boo uh, it's time to either refill the system or you can wire this up what I tend to do is refill the system and while it's filling I'll get on with wiring this back into the control box then you can go around and bleed all your radiators and uh, you should be there um, as usual as I said before um, make sure you add inhibitor because you've obviously drained it out I know people say, oh, it's draining all my stuff out, but it's probably a good thing to drain your system now and again, even with inhibitor in it, because it does give it a fresh clean out and a fresh start. So it's not wasted. You get something back for doing a freeway valve completely in that you emptied everything out uh, and you're starting afresh with a new inhibitor and a good flush out of the old system, as well as getting the new valve and the new body part, not just the head. And I think it's a good thing to do all round. I've always done it that way. I've, I've never usually just changed the head. So that's it really, that's the job. Um, I'm just gonna get wiring up now and filling up, which is the usual thing, you know about that now. So uh, really that's about it on fitting a freeway valve. It's not too bad after all, but please, if you're worried about the electrics, don't touch them, get someone in to do that for you, okay? So I, I do realize that not all of you are competent around electrics and that's fine, okay? Do the right thing if you're not happy with that. <laughs> okay, that's it. Well, thanks very much for watching and uh, you know what my channel is, Derek and 33. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you again next time, bye-bye.